What in water did Bloom, water lover, drawer of water, water carrier, returning to the range, admire? Its universality, its democratic quality and constancy to its nature in seeking its own level, its vastness in the ocean of Mercator's projection, its unplumbed profundity in the sun dammed trench of the Pacific exceeding 8,000 fathoms, What in water did Bloom, water lover, drawer of water, water carrier, returning to the range, admire? The restlessness of its waves and surface particles, visiting in turn all points of its seaboard, the independence of its units, the variability of states of sea, its hydrostatic quiescence in calm. What in water did Bloom, water lover, drawer of water, water carrier, returning to the range, admire? Its hydrokinetic turgidity in neap and spring tides, its subsidence after devastation, its sterility in the circumpolar ice caps, Arctic and Antarctic. The multicellular stability of its primeval basin, its climatic and commercial significance, its preponderance of three to one over the dry land of the globe, its indisputable hegemony extending in square leagues over all the regions below the sub-equatorial tropic of Capricorn, its luteofulvous bed, its capacity to dissolve and hold in solution all soluble substances, including millions of tons of the most precious metals, What in water did Bloom, water lover, drawer of water, water carrier, returning to the range, admire? Its slow erosions of peninsulas and downward tending promontories. Its alluvial deposits, its weight and volume and density, its imperturbability in lagoons and highland tarns. Its gradation of colors, in the torrid and temperate and frigid zones. Its vehicular ramifications in continental lake-contained streams and confluent ocean-flowing rivers with their tributaries and transoceanic currents. What in water did Bloom, water lover, drawer of water, water carrier, returning to the range, admire? Gulf Stream, North and South Equatorial Courses, its violence and sea quakes, water spouts, artesian wells, eruptions, torrents, eddies, freshets, spates, ground swells, watersheds, water partings, geysers, cataracts, whirlpools, maelstroms, inundations, deluges, cloudbursts, its vast circumterrestrial a-horizontal curve, its secrecy in springs and latent humidity, revealed by rhabdomantic or hygrometric instruments, and exemplified by the hole in the wall at Ashdown Gate. Saturation of air, distillation of dew, the simplicity of its composition, two constituent parts of hydrogen with one constituent part of oxygen, its healing virtues, its buoyancy in the waters of the Dead Sea, 
its persevering penetrativeness in runnels, gullies, inadequate dams, leaks on shipboard, its properties for cleansing, quenching thirst and fire, nourishing vegetation, its infallibility as paradigm and paragon, its metamorphoses as vapor, mist, cloud, rain, sleet, snow, hail, its strength in rigid hydrants, its variety of forms in locks and bays and gulfs and bites and guts and lagoons and atolls and archipelagos and sounds and fjords and minches and tidal estuaries and arms of sea, its solidity in glaciers, icebergs, ice flows, its docility in working hydraulic mill wheels, turbines, dynamos, electric power stations, bleach works, tanneries, scotch mills, its utility in canals, rivers, if navigable, floating and graving docks, its potentiality derivable from harnessed tides or watercourses falling from level to level, its submarine fauna and flora, an acoustic photophobe, numerically if not literally, the inhabitants of the globe, its ubiquity, 